Sometimes the people who help me run my channel on Patreon can do a small poll. And in this poll they can vote on what my next video is going to be about. I ask you guys what butterfly would you like to see next and all of you overwhelmingly voted for the three-tailed tiger swallowtail, scientific name Papilio pilumnus. Papilio pilumnus is an amazing species from North America. Although it's incorrect to just limit myself to North America because it's also found in Central America and places such as Mexico and Guatemala. Here these butterflies really enjoy the warm and rather dryish climate when, um, where they lay eggs on an evergreen species of Lauraceae called Litsea. The three-tailed swallowtail, Papilio pilumnus, is an extraordinarily beautiful swallowtail butterfly from North America. Although it would be incorrect to focus on the fact it lives in North America, because it's found in more, uh, more places than the United States. This butterfly is also mainly found in Mexico, but also parts of Guatemala. In fact, it is mainly a Central American species, and it rarely strays into Southern Texas. Most of the time, the biggest populations are in Mexico, Guatemala and El Salvador with the occasional specimens migrating over the border to North America. These butterflies really enjoy warmth, as they are found in warm and hot climates, where they are found in tropical woodlands. The host plant of this species are trees from the genus Litsea. This is from the family of Laurel, aka the Lauraceae. Although this species lives in warm, and somewhat tropical countries, it is not always continuously brooded. For example, in Mexico it's mainly recorded from March to October. After that, the pupa are able to go in a diapausal-like state and hibernate. One should not forget that while Mexico, Guatemala and El Salvador can be very much like tropical and warm paradises, Central America is not fully tropical all times of the year and does experience a small but mild winter with cold temperatures up to zero degrees Celsius, which is the freezing point. Therefore, the insects that live in these regions are often still able to diapause and survive mild winters, even though they are tropical species. All the specimens in North America are considered to be stray butterflies, which means they are not exactly a native population, but rather specimens from Central America that keep migrating northwards. Despite that, the butterfly has been recorded reproducing itself in North America too, and specimens have been found, uh, especially caterpillars feeding on Litsea in Arizona, in Texas, but sometimes also even in Florida. Other cases like this are quite rare. Litsea is the genus name of its food plant, but I did some digging to find out more information. Turns out that one they really like is Litsea glaucusens, although there's a probability they will use many more plants from this genus. I also found an interesting article that mentioned that Papilio pilumnus can complete its development on sassafras in laboratory conditions. Laboratory conditions basically means in captivity. In the wild, they would probably never or rarely eat sassafras, but if the caterpillars are transferred to it in captivity, they will eat it. In fact, it could be a suitable host plant, but it's never used because the females never lay eggs on it, so the caterpillars will rarely contact it in the wild. And interesting to think about. It could also mean that breeders who are a little bit creative can use more host plants for these species in captivity than the ones that they use in the wild. Other potential candidates could be other plants from the Lauraceae or the Laurel family. Anyways, this was a short video with some fun facts and images about Papilio pilumnus because you voted for it. Thank you and thank you for participating in the vote. Consider joining my crowdfunding platform Patreon. My channel is demonetized 
And most of my work with insects is crowdfunded. That means that you are not only helping me and my channel, but you are also helping insects because you are enabling me to work with them and make education. Those of you who have subscribed, make sure to check out the platform itself and participate in the polls. In the future, I'm going to let you vote on more content. Thank you and bye bye.